Welcome to the Garage Door. We're opening the garage tonight for the band Motinko, uh, consisting of Cat Clemens. Hey, Cat. Hey, how you doing? And Cat, you play <laughs> bass. Do you play bass? Right? I, I play. You... I play guitar. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Josh no, that's is the bass. All right. They look alike. <laughs> <laughs> and James, you you play drums, correct? That's correct. Micah, keyboards. Hey, Micah. Yep. yep. So. And Josh Bass, of course. Yes, sir. Fantastic. You guys are from Austin. Uh, what's going on down in Austin? Anything opening up yet, or are things still pretty kind of slow as far as being able to play? Pretty slow. Still, playing. yeah. Pretty yeah, slow. Yeah, I don't have anything at this point. Yeah. Yeah. We were yeah, there's a couple. Oh, go ahead. No, Micah, go ahead. There's a couple of venues um, that have outdoor stuff that are just starting to have shows. But, you know, it's like three or two or three venues out of, you know, dozens and dozens of venues that usually are running. So anyway, I know that's that's a that's the this just the situation we're in. So hopefully you guys can get back out there soon. Um, the band I'm in has tried doing some of the remote stuff, but it, it there was lags and we just said forget about it. It didn't work for us very well. Have you guys tried any of that? Not too much of the remote stuff. I've, I've been a part of a couple of kind of socially distant streaming shows that are, you know, kind of the, the way you describe the, the outdoor performances, um, just without an audience, you know, someone will either have, you know, a, a, the iPhone pointed in the direction of the band or a more complicated uh, technical setup. Um, but where it's generally been just the, the band at a comfortable distance and, uh, you know, two or three crew members, Trying, trying to keep it as low as possible for a lot of that stuff. Oh, sure, sure. Well, now, James, you said something that I want to run with. Uh, you guys do a cover of Ophelia that I'm a big The Band uh, fan, and to me, you guys are the band of Austin. Now, I don't know. I have know several bands, but to me, you guys sound a lot like The Band. Um, love the cover of that. You know, I guess, Micah, you would be Garth. James, you'll have to be Levon. I'll take uh, it. <laughs> Josh, you're, you're Rick Danko, of course, yeah. I guess. And Chad, I guess you're Robbie, man. Yeah. No. I'm... Oh, man, I got I to gotta be the meanest one. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, he's going to steal your songwriting. No, I'm Yeah, kidding. right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Robbie. Sorry, Robbie. Uh, so anyway, you guys, if you could, uh, Micah, how did you guys get together? Well, um, I, I met James first on Whiskey Shivers tour. Um... I met Josh next playing some gigs with, I think I just met you watching music, actually, uh, Ben Ballmer, a uh, mutual friend of ours and a great singer-songwriter, and um, Cat plays with him now, too. And then I met Cat on a gig as well, um, uh, uh, kind of a random pickup gig at... Um, yeah, Blackheart. Blackheart, right, right. Uh, and that was super fun. So, I mean, you know, the short answer is like, yeah, we kind of all met in the Austin music scene, but, but uh, I was... I was selling merchandise on tour with a band called the Whiskey Shivers, um, and James was playing in the band. That's how me and James met. Uh, and, you know, we started talking about music that had nothing to do with bluegrass, and so that was cool. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, what, what amazes Craig and I, what we were talking about earlier, is just the, the amount of musicianship. It seems like you guys have been playing a lot longer together than you really have, but I guess that's just... Um, an homage to how much you guys have played out as gig as gigging musicians through the years and put in time and time on the craft. But was there a, was there a certain show where you guys go, oh, this is it, or um, a certain time you got together? Or was it just the sparks flying when you first were able to play? Anyway. I'll let someone else answer that question. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think uh, so. We all we all play together. Like I I've um, we all play together in a bunch of different groups. And, um, and we've all known each other for varying lengths of time. Um, like me and James, I, I knew James before I knew uh, Josh and who I, both of them I knew before I knew Micah. Uh, so we're in a bunch of projects. So it, I feel like kind of immediately, it just, everything clicked really well because we had all played together before. And me and Micah had played uh, with that gig that we'd mentioned with the mutual friend Chris Wade, so we'd all... I was on that, too, I think. Yeah, you were, yeah, th yeah. that's right, you were on that one. Gosh, were you on that gig? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, because Wade was on it, that's right. Well, yeah, yeah, the double bass, you know. 
right? <laughs> yeah. Double double. Yeah, the, <laughs> the old double double. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, the so we got a residency. Um, uh, pretty, uh, that's kind of the residency at, at this bar called Stay Gold is pretty much what I consider the beginning of the band, even though we were playing a little bit before then. And um, that was my basically my first real shot at fronting a band on a regular basis in any sense. So I felt a lot of like um, there wasn't one show where I was like, oh man, this is it, but. But um, getting to do it every week just got me feeling a little bit more comfortable every week, and, and that kind of uh, steamrolled a little bit. So, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was like six or nine months into it, or whatever, I was feeling way more comfortable. And so I remember having a lot of those nights where I was like, man, this is better than it, than it used to be, and, and it's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and I'm not just saying this, but, I mean, I really feel like you guys are a current version of the band Josh, your bass lines and the way you're able to just blend stuff with James sounds amazing. And Kat, oh, you're you. in there, and it all works works just fantastically for me. I mean, I love the. To me, there's a little bit of a soul, little little bit, a lot of soul sound in the, in some of the things oh, I've yeah. heard. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the organ adds a lot to that. But it's kind of a. It reminds me of a, from about '68 through '74, that kind of stuff, but with a modern sound to it as well. I don't. I don't. I'm not for. Uh, uh, you know, just oh, this band sounds like a band from '64. I mean, I think you guys have something that's that's modern too in that sound. So, I mean, good music is good music. I try not to put dates on anything. So, you know, like something from the '20s or something from now sounds great. Yeah. But, um, Jim, now when you guys are playing live, what kit do you usually play? I, I'm a gearhead. I gotta throw that out there. Oh man, the the kit that I use for that Stagold show gets a lot of attention. Actually, it's. It's like the cheapest thing I own, and it's, uh, I got it for 200 bucks. It's a 20 inch kick drum, but it's about 10 inches deep. Oh man. So it's okay. like, you know, as, as deep as some snare drums, but just, you know, just large and tilted on its side. And then the toms are also small, uh, kind of matching that, that frame. The, the floor tom is a 13, which typically they're, they're 14s. But it gets the biggest sound. Like it's the smallest floor tom, but it's my favorite. Like I've I've taken just that floor tom to other studios and like used all their kit except for my floor tom, you know. And uh, it's just it's one of those drums, those magical drums that you find sometimes. Sure. Uh, sure. But yeah, I just play like a jazz kind of four piece thing with a, a rack floor tom, uh, crash and ride and hat. Pretty simple. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Josh, uh, like what are some of your influences? Where, like, who are some people that, that really influenced the, the style you play bass? Well, I mean, you know, I, I've always loved James Jameson, you know, that's, uh, sure. Dev he's definitely an influence of mine. And, but, uh, you know, I'm a huge Charles Mingus fan and, uh, you know, Christian McBride and there's modern people out there too, but Mingus is probably my my favorite. Do you, do you play stand up as well? Uh, yeah, actually, all all the stuff I do with this band is stand up for the, really for the most part. Well, okay, I knew in some of the videos I'd seen, but I didn't know if, if you actually did stand up when you're out doing the gigs and stuff. Very we good. We do, yeah. yeah. Well, so how do you mic? Where do you how do you mic that? Where do you usually put the mic on that? Uh, I gotta pick up a. Uh, it's called the Lifeline, made by a guy named David Gage, and it's a, it's just a like a prong that goes under the adjuster okay. of the bridge, and okay, and just Very cool. well, I'm I'm asking that question for for our bass player. He's wanting uh -huh. to get a stand up, but he's like, hey, how would I, how will I be heard over you guys? But mm. yeah, pickup is the way to go, I think, mm. in a band setting. Cat, some of your influences. Um like sly stone is one of the biggest for me and especially Genius. like one album that he did called fresh which is one that yep. i listened to like a million times when i was a kid yep. um but i like i like to play all different kinds of music um you know like i we we play you know country me, me and james and josh play country gigs and stuff together you know and, and jazz gigs and stuff so I, I like a lot of different kinds of stuff um but in the context of this band 
you know, like uh, all of the great like R and B stuff from like the fifties to even like, well, even some of the more modern stuff, like the D'Angelo stuff, you know, so mm -hmm. just trying to be informed of, of like the, you know, the kind of oral history of the music. That's a good thing. Sure. Yeah. Mike, I don't think we mentioned in the last program we did, who were some of your influences? Yeah, I was just trying to think. Um, I, Bill, Bill Withers for sure. Although there's not, I wouldn't say, I would say that's more of like a, the, the groove approach, sure. the songwriting approach. Uh, um, that's, you know, he falls somewhere between like funk and soul as far as I'm concerned. And, and I really liked that. Uh, but um, as far as keyboard know, style, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, as far as keyboard style, man, you know, Billy Preston probably. Oh, nice. Um, but I've just listened to so much music that has keyboards kind of somewhere in there, but it's not necessarily central. I mean, um, right, right. But who else can I throw out? Doctor John for sure, mm -hmm. and you know that whole lineage. I mean, it's hard to ignore anybody in the New Orleans school. So, so uh, Professor Longhair is kind of yeah, the yep. the grandfather, yep. and and uh, uh, but like my dad listened to a lot of jazz growing up, so I'll, so. I'll, Harry Connick Jr. was in the house, and and Diana Krall, and I'm finding out that all these people played played piano. Well, they they did at least. Um, and uh, Lee Dorsey for sure. I'm not sure if he played piano, but but uh, his songwriting is a huge influence. Similarly to Bill Withers, it's kind of like a sweet spot of melodic funk or you know groovy soul. Well, it's got that big, huge pocket in it, too, I think, and a yeah. lot of Lee Dorsey stuff. And I just, I love that pocket, you know. I'm very, very comfortable in that pocket. Totally. Yeah. And Ben Folds, too. Ben, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to a lot of Ben Folds when I was a kid. James, any of your, your influences? I, I think I have a, you know, a similar kind of answer that we all have musical tastes all over the place. But I, I think for this kind of stuff, what – what I try to envision is kind of uh, Joseph Modely's uh, Zigaboo from the Meters. Yep. Like, I, I think he is a, a great example of really smart pattern playing with like huge grooves, but still is very adventurous. Like, I, I, that's, that's something that I've really enjoyed about playing in this band is like, you know, definitely finding the, the place to, to sit with everybody and, and enjoy the group, but also like those moments to step out and be like, hey, I got something to say too. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yes, very right much so. Time. Very much so. Well, I know Craig and I were talking now on your level, uh, which was a single. Love the video for that with just the, the one inch reel. I think it's a one inch reel. You know, oh, that's yeah. just, can you guys tell us a little bit about that, how that video was made? Well, um, so we, we had a friend of ours, John Valley, who is actually a pretty well-known dude about the town, um, uh, as far as making videos goes. Uh, we were having him do a couple of actual, you know, music videos featuring us, um, and that is, Silhouette is, is one of those, and then there's, there's another one we have, uh, you know, in the oven that is yet to be released. And he was asking me about On Your Level, which was... I think like about to be released in like a week or something. And I was like, no, actually I don't have a video for that. I was just going to like animate an image. I had an image of the band of like, there was like a little bit of moving in my hair and there was like a little bit of smoke coming out of cat's like hat. And I was like, I'll just use that for the video. Cause we don't have anything. And, uh, and then John just had the idea. He was like, what about a tape machine? And then I told John that we actually recorded to a tape machine. And so we used the, that is the tape machine we recorded on. It's a Otari something or other tape machine that uh, Sam has. And, and yeah, John just like, he was just like, I think I'm just going to just shoot a bunch of shots of the tape machine and put them together. And we ended up playing the actual song through the tape machine. So, you know, he's recording the meters, like yes. reacting to the song yes. in real time. Yeah. So it was just a quick and dirty thing by a dude who really knows what he's doing. So it ended up looking looking pretty good. It's very cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Craig and I were Craig and I were talking, and uh, oh by the way, uh, James, you were talking about Richie Hayward too from Little Feet. He's got a little bit of that New Orleans. Totally. 
you know I, I grew up his, listening to a lot of that because my uh, my parents loved little feet and and you know a lot of the dr john and stuff I, that was constant music in the house for me oh yeah so to get off there but anyway craig and I, craig and i were talking about one of the main things is authenticity you know and you guys seem authentic um go ahead craig oh thank you thanks yeah awesome it seems like you guys kind of like different kinds of music and and i think that's what makes it sound so good together is because you bring all those different styles kind of gel them all together like i said you have that old school sound with the new school stuff so and, and i think that's original so that's what we were talking about i really like that right on thanks man yeah thank you uh any are you get start, guys starting to get any interest any interest from any labels or what are you going to do you're going to you try to do it DIY or are you going to try and, you know, what are you wanting to do? Well, the, the goal is to, yeah, I think the goal is to get some attention um, from people. Uh, I, we don't have a manager, but I'm getting like advice from people who manage bands. And it seems like um, more importantly than like actually getting a label deal is getting um, like, yeah, attention from people who might want you on their labels, because that means you're doing something right. Uh, yeah. So basically, it's it's too early to say, but but yeah, I mean, the whole uh, goal here is to, yeah, I mean, position ourselves to be desirable in general. And then, um, then we can decide what we want to do. A, a label would be nice, but I'm not trying to be in debt. Uh, so <laughs> right, you know, right, we'll, right. I'm, I'm going to let that lead and, and see what happens. Why do that on your own? <laughs> The first you say? From you can do that on your own. Oh, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for, yeah. for gear. Yeah. 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 Constant state. Oh, man, I got to, yeah. Oh, yeah. When um, it is the uh, first song that you guys, that I found when I found you guys, you got almost 200,000 views on it already. Yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, that's that's taken off, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, I, I, it's an ad. It, it was, it was an ad. I took a course on Facebook ads and, uh, so, you know, I think it was a great video and, and, um, uh, you know, it was, it was, it, it was a good enough take. I was happy with the take and, and I think um, people must've liked the fact that you could see all three people in one shot or something, but, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it, we got a really good response on it and, and, uh, I have no idea what to compare it to. I mean, like, Two hundred thousand views. It, it's all. It all feels strange, and and you know, um, hopefully we can get some YouTube views that are totally unpaid for that are in in similar numbers. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So I. I yeah. I, I understand that completely. But I. I just. I. I was in, immediately enamored. Uh, Craig said, "Troy, man, check this out," and I immediately jumped on it. Silhouette, I think, is great. Um, it's a great tune. Cat, sorry, we need to go back to you. Uh, what kind of gear, what guitar do you play? Anything in, in your influences? What you, What did you say? What, what? Said, yeah, what kind of guitar do you play? I'm a gearhead. Oh, so I, I always like I, you gear. know, similar to James, like I don't, I the guitar that I play, I got for $400 from a buddy of mine. It's just like, you know, it's an American Strat, Stratocaster, but it's no special guitar. Um, just whatever works and whatever looks, it has to work and look good. And that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> what about your amp cat? My amp is, um, a dude, actually a guy in Indiana made, uh, named Danny Nashkoff made my amp and I'm, but I've had it. He made it for me when I was like 17, 18 oh, years old oh, okay. or something. So I've had it for like a really long time, but that's the one I use most of the time. Yeah. And you're from Crown Point, Indiana? Right? I am. Yeah, I'm from Crown Point, Indiana. Yep. Oh, so, Crown Point. Yeah, the culture, oh. the culture uh, hub of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's Are right. any of you guys from Austin? No, no, no we're not. <laughs> Individually, how did you guys end up in Austin? What, what, how did you gravitate to that area? I know that's where music is. So, but. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of us, well, James and I think Josh, you're you're from Texas too, right? I'm from Albuquerque originally. Oh yeah, that's okay. right. You're from Albuquerque. So James is the only one from Texas, and the rest of us, you know, there's just <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> you're from Corpus, right? Yeah, I grew up in Corpus Christi. I, I moved there when I was in like the seventh grade. 
uh, but before that, I lived in uh, Missouri, like in mm. Kansas City, Missouri, for a little while, and I was born in Mississippi. But I oh, lived, okay, I, I lived in Texas like most of my life. Yeah, but I think the the short answer is that all of us, you know, Austin is is such a um, is a, such a great place for live music, and not only that, there's like a lot of different kinds of music going on down here, and I think that's mm -hmm. something that we all have in common is that we all like to play a lot of different kinds of music. So um, I yeah. I just think like a similar reason just to be near where all the good players and where all the gigs are. Right. Yeah. When I when I visited town. Uh, I remember like going out one night and we went to like a, a prog rock show. There was this band called Mouth and they were awesome. They were just like crazy, like festival band. And I was like, wow, these guys are actually like really good musicians. It's not just like weird stuff. And I went outside for a minute and I heard a brass band warming up and I, and they sounded really good. Like the horn players were clearly really pro. And I looked over and they were wearing like silver sequins <laughs> and I was like, all right, I, I want to, this is where I want to be. <laughs> I want to be a part of this, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Josh, when did – who moved to Austin first? I mean, Josh, were you – sounds like you were there first or – I moved in 2006. Okay. I had a friend from Albuquerque that needed a roommate, and he talked me into moving out. That's basically okay. how that happened. My my main experience with Austin is just the killer record uh, conventions they used to have. Uh, I'm a big vinyl collector and um, huge. I mean, just I don't know. If they do they still have them? You guys, do you know? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Convention center. Yeah, used to be huge. I mean, just tons of records. There were guys that would carry like a little little briefcase of 45s, and they would they would they would sell that was in these 45s for like fifteen twenty thousand dollars. You know, it's like. Uh, you know, wow. Whoa. I chose they, the wrong job in the music industry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, I think also Austin, like a lot of college towns, uh, has an attitude that's uh, a little more open-minded. Well, I say this about music in general. I mean, you know, that you might hear that brass band here, and then you might hear funk over here, and country and western over there. Uh, you know, it all kind of blends in. Uh, have you guys found that to be true? Yeah. There's lots of different types of music there, definitely. Well, we looked into – we kind of looked in – Tammy and I, my wife and I kind of looked in into it. Now, this has probably been, gosh, 10 years ago about moving, and uh, just the stuff was getting so expensive. I mean, it, has it, is it easier now? Is it, has the price went down or stuff? <laughs> definitely up? not easier. Yeah. So yeah. many people coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. People talk about it a lot. That's the kind of uh, how's the weather in Austin is like, well, man, rent's really going up and all these people are moving in. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, guys, what what do you think is the next move? Just getting, hopefully getting back to playing live or are you going to do some more session stuff? Uh, do you have anything in, in your back pocket you're ready to talk about? Well, we've got the rest of the EP, um, which at this point is is uh, old. Uh, like the songs have been done for months. You know, I don't even know how many six months or nine months or something. And um, so, you know, yeah. I mean, the the whole the, the dream is to record music and play gigs uh, that are fun and you know ho hopefully well attended and just to kind of be able to do both uh, and. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. break even at least. So we'll see. Yeah, we've been talking just very recently about you know potentially doing one of those kind of socially distanced uh, streaming shows at the actually the same studio that we recorded the EP at. Okay. Uh, I'm sure we'll figure out a way to get that to the people that want to see that if, if we make that happen. But um, that's about like the most concrete thing. It seems like such a a hard time to have yeah. specific plans. I imagine we could maybe make some kind of a studio time, you know, kind of happen. Like the, the less people involved with any process seemed like the, the best right now. But. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. I mean, we were, we all just kind of took it seriously right off the bat and, and uh, things are worse than they were when, when we all decided to start taking seriously. But um, you know, if we can do it and if we can do like 
for example, studio sessions are a live show in a smart way, which for us basically means, you know, as little indoors contact as possible and masks and all that stuff. If there's a way to do it, we can do it. So, so yeah, Sam, the guy, the, um, there, his YouTube channel is called Bud's Records. Um, yeah, Bud's Records. And he has already done some awesome live streams. If you want to see some really funky, solely kind of good stuff, um, Austin, that is, okay. what'd you say? All, all from bands from Austin. Yeah, local bands. Uh, the the Greyhounds, which is a band out of Austin, um, has a side project that is most of the members of Gre the Greyhounds called Troop Feral and Sniz. And anyway, there's a lot of other great players on there. But but yeah, we'll probably be doing a live stream from his the backyard of his studio with XLR cables running into all the gear and all that. And, um, <laughs> You guys haven't, you've been social distance from one another. You haven't been around each other since all this started or? Yeah, no. You That's correct. Yet or? What'd you say? So are you guys all stir crazy yet or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's safe to say. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't been in the, we haven't been in the radio the station for, gosh, since March. March, uh, yeah. We've been doing doing a remote like this, and and it's just it's difficult. I'm 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 ready, but on the other hand, I'm not either. I don't want to do anything, jump the gun too quickly. Right. Uh, the band I'm in is trying. We're trying to figure out how to play. We thought we might set up set up out here on our on our deck, you know, keep apart that kind of thing. Uh, so we're trying to figure it out. Hopefully, you guys will get get that figured out. Yeah. Yeah. For long, but all right. And any of you guys into vinyl? Any of you guys collect records at all? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I got my dad's uh, record collection and his record player, yeah, and awesome. and the the home stereo system that we used to have in the house uh, <laughs> in my bedroom. So right. I can't say I collect, but I have you know <laughs> songs in the key of life uh, ready to go, and a few other good ones. So, Josh, you got any you got any Mingus' stuff on on LP? Uh, I'm without a record player right now. I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> so, I'm afraid not. Cat, you got anything cooking vinyl wise? I'm always. I mean, let's see if you can see over here. I've, I've got a bunch of records. Awesome. Yes. Um, so, and I'm I'm always listening to records and stuff. I, and I've I've been you know I've I've been collecting records since I was a little kid. So I have a bunch of them. Um, but I was just listening to um, to this record by a guy named Harold Land, who it, with Wes Montgomery on guitar, and it's he was one of the great band leaders of like the '60s that people don't really talk about a lot. Harold Land, he was an amazing tenor sax player. Huh. Okay. Harold Land. Check that out. All right. Well, guys, before we wrap it, anything you want to close with? I just want to say thank you for taking the time. I'd like for you guys to make this a reoccurring thing. We'd like to check in again yeah. in a month or so and see how everybody's doing, see if there's anything progressing, because we really, really want to back you guys as much as we can. Yeah, we want to see you guys uh, succeed. So thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely keep you posted. I mean, um, for now, the, the release of the EP, which has um, three other songs on it besides those first two, uh look out for that like i was telling you a little bit ago i'm still not exactly sure we uh are, are self-managed right now so right. the the strategy tends to change <laughs> every every couple weeks but but we'll release it in the summer or maybe the fall depending <laughs> on uh how much mileage we can get out of the first two singles um and then yeah um Check out Bud's Records YouTube channel. We'll, we will probably be popping up there for a live stream, and it'll stay up online. Um, you know, it definitely after the fact. So that's the closest thing we'll be we'll be playing uh, to a live show until probably for a pretty decent amount of time. Um, and then any more records than those uh, three tracks that are going to be on the EP have yet to be recorded. So, but you got stuff in the works for it. Oh yeah, we. We uh we have you know probably enough songs to fill another full length record and a half um, ready to go, but it's just a matter of laying them down and making sure they're good. Uh, will there be a physical product, fellas? Do you know? I mean, are you just going to be just a digital only, or will there be vinyl or a CD available? 
there will be definitely a CD. Um, actually, I could probably, if, if it weren't buried under all my uh, stuff in my room, I'd show it to you right now. But there's, we actually printed CDs already to, to try to, you know, it was just like, why not? A merch item to have at the residency and, and uh, there's no rules anymore. So um, we have a CD that will, once the EP is released, we'll put the CD up online and then, I don't know, uh, vinyl... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. We'll definitely release vinyl at some point, um, but it may not be for the EP. But as long as we're, you know, vintage music apologists, we might as well uh, print some vinyl and hope people are going to buy it. Well, I, I'm, I'm in line. Go ahead and just put me down for an order. I'll go Sweet. ahead and get that. But the thing is, there, there is a wait. I know there's a wait. A lot of the pressing plants are still backed up quite a bit oh. as, far, as far as that's concerned. But if you are interested, I do know a few people, Micah, who, who will take a uh, your master tape, and then they'll master it in-house and, and press there too, a couple couple places. So just Very contact cool. Craig if you're interested and in, in, yeah. if I could help out in any way on that. I'm sure there's resources in Austin too. Sure. Yeah, we will do. And, you know, I mean, in the meantime, the, the thing I keep saying is just uh, follow us on social media. Sign up for our email list is really the best way. And then uh, anything and everything we, we put out, uh, you'll be notified. How how would you be able to sign up for your for the on the email list? Where do you where do we need to go? There's a little field on our website, um, but as long as it's just me and you, I mean, you can just send me okay. your email over that chat, and and uh, okay. I'll add, add you to the to the list. Yeah, but yeah, our website at the on the footer of every page, there's a little field to sign up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks you guys for being on the garage door. Before we go, we've got to play a little trivia though. If you guys are up for it, a little music right. trivia. Oh, well, here we go. <laughs> Sure. Okay, I'll throw you throw you out an easy one. Name the artist that uh, performed with his or her band, Out of Sight. Um, out of Sight. I I don't know. He has some famous flames. Oh, James, James Brown. Brown. James Brown. Very good. That that was a tough one. Okay, so it's one of you guys' <laughs> turn. Throw one out there for us all. Oh. Uh. Troy, you always want to play these games. <laughs> hey, name, name the drummer from Booker T and the MGs. Um, oh, uh, um, Al Jackson. Oh. <laughs> love, love his pocket. Love just yeah. the way he plays. Simple. Uh, he always put his billfold on the snare too. Just that's that's one of the reasons I do. I mean, it it does improve the quality but i always think it's like it was good enough for al jackson <laughs> i saw that james i noticed that in the video yes i did notice that now That's that you great. mentioned it yeah yeah all right all right who's got another one come on this is my exciting thursday night this is <laughs> i'm old this is what i do for fun <laughs> um, Greg, you got one. go ahead no i don't have one <laughs> i know some okay Troy knows everything about the songs. You're never going to win with Troy. That's the thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, what is Ringo's real name? Richard Starkey. Oh, yeah. You are, Craig. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, who is known as – now, this is an easy one. If you miss this, who is known as the bird? Charlie Parker. Yes, very good. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> Name one Billy Preston solo hit. Ooh, nothing for nothing. Will it go around in circles? <laughs> perfect, perfect. Nothing for nothing. Will it go around in circles? Space Race. That was another one. Uh, forget that ballad he did in the mid '80s. Sorry. <laughs> that was an experimental time right. in its own right. <laughs> All right, I've, I've got a, I've got one, a random one. Um, name. Name one of the Temptations who had a solo career. Uh, oh. Eddie Kendrick. Oh, oh. You got me. I don't know. Yeah. Eddie Kendrick. Yeah, James got, got it. it. Good job. Good job. Who was James? David I didn't catch it. Who was it? <laughs> yes. Crap. Yes. Yes. Who did an ill-advised duet in the mid-80s of Martha and the Vandellas dancing in the street? And Bowie and, oh, uh, and uh, um, Bowie and uh, Taggart. Jagger, right. Very good. Yeah, Bowie and Jagger. And it's 
Got to cringe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a real funny video. Somebody like removed the audio from that and like just put in like the noise of like what it would be <laughs> to just see them doing that, and it's very funny on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Okay, uh, who was in, name this band that had Glenn Matlock, Johnny Blank, and Sid Blank? Easy. The Sex Pistols? Very good, yeah, thank hey, you. Right. Right. Sid Vicious. Vicious. Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious? Yep. <laughs> okay, N name one song that Billy Preston played with the Beatles on. Michael, we talked about that last time. You should you should remember this. Yeah, well, don't let me down is my favorite one. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Have you, Mike? Have you been able to check that out yet on the Abbey Road that was just released? No, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, it's. Uh, there was a session. What we were talking about, Josh, James, and Cat. There was a on a, on the Abbey Road uh, uh, the like the reissue they did. The, one of the outtakes is Billy Preston doing just a wild ass organ. Uh, playing on "Don't Let Me Down," it's just amazing. I mean, uh, just uh, and on "I Want You," she's so heavy. It's just mind blowing oh, what, what he does on that. So, okay, uh, James, you ready for this drummer question? Oh boy! <laughs> name name the drummer for Weird Al Yankovic. Oh man, I I want to know that. I love that. that that's like a dream game. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, John Bermuda Schwartz. We check out our YouTube channel. We just did a, a an hour and a half show with him. It's it's is that is that up now, Craig? Yeah, I got it. Up in, yeah, that is an impressive drumming gig. Like the the amount of genres that that material spans through, yeah. and the, the convincing way that band plays that stuff is just incredible. Yeah, it's just amazing what he's able to do. But John Bermuda Schwartz. Yeah, if you guys have you guys checked out uh, our Mike, I think your video, your first, the first installment is going to go up when this weekend, Craig. Sometime. Yeah, get it up probably tomorrow, Saturday. I'll let you know. So, if if you know, send you a link. It's called the Garage Door. Uh, well, Craig, are you able to send them a link? I don't do Facebook, fella, so I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> That's yeah, all right. Send us the link, please. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got our emails now, so. Yeah, yeah. I'll send it all to you. There you go. Yeah, please. <laughs> Cool. Well, gentlemen, thank you for playing along with us. Let's, again, we'd like to check in with you in about a month, if that's cool with everybody. That'd uh, be great, man. Yeah. You guys are back out by then. Back out. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Back out in, in our living rooms. We, <laughs> we've left <laughs> the privacy of our bedrooms. James, uh, I do got to tell you, right now in my practice, in the garage, my practice garage, I've got a 1957 Gretsch kit set up, 22, 13, 16. Just sounds amazing. That bass is really, really good. Now, the toms are great, but the bass is what sells that kit. Um, Sometimes there's just like that one drum in the set that you're like, that's that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Al Jackson said that too. He had a Rogers bass, I think. Um, and Rogers bass is, I don't know, sorry, drum geek talk. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> those, those Rogers 20-inch basses are amazing. They just, they're great. A lot of big tuning range, all kinds of stuff. So, Anyway, thank you, fellas, very much for being on the garage door. Stay safe, love, and peace. Thank you guys very much. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thanks for having us on. Have a good one. Bye, Cheers. Yeah.